Hello, how are you doing? I'm Craig Parkinson. You are listening to the Two Shot Podcast. Sit yourself down, pop the kettle on. We're going to have a nice old chat. Who's it with this week? I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> Hello, welcome. This is the Two Shot Podcast. You've downloaded, you've subscribed, hopefully you've subscribed. If you haven't, hit the subscribe button now. And what else you want to do? You want to get onto Twitter, Instagram, it's at Two Shot Pod. Join us on there. You'll get exclusive photographs, videos. We'll probably let you know who's coming up next week before anybody else. Find us on Facebook. That's a good way to keep in touch. Also, if you want to keep in touch, drop us an email it's two shot pod at gmail.com. Where am I this week? I'll tell you where I am. I'm just outside of Oldham in the lovely countryside, having a nice sit down chat and a cup of tea with William Ash. <laughs> Do you ever look out that window and imagine? Sort of three men in a bathtub. So, cause I went out, where, do you know when I was driving down here? Because I was coming from the city. And I was going, oh, yeah, well, I thought you said he lived in the countryside. It's not really very countryside. And then I turn a corner. Oh, it does, yeah. And it's it just like, opens up. It's, you're walking onto the set of Last of the Summer Wine. Yeah, yeah. Which, does. for those people listening who don't know what Last of the Summer Wine is, it was a, a sitcom that ran for 500 bloody episodes <laughs> and it was mainly about three old men who uh, sat in a bathtub. It's a, sh- it's a shame it's finished. We, we'd be in the right demographic to We're up it for now, it now, yeah. aren't we? Um, now, here I am, sat, that lovely Mancunian voice that you hear is uh, Will Ash. Uh, he's invited us into his home. We're going to sit down and have a nice cup of tea. Will, how are you, mate? I'm all right, yeah, I'm good. Good. Um, when you were growing up, acting... Yeah. wasn't the first thing you wanted to do, was it? No. No. Um, I wanted to be a, a footballer. Did you? Yeah. Was that from an early age? Was that always something that was yeah, a massive yeah. passion for you? That was all I wanted to do. Um, and I, I kind of I started acting by going to Oldham Theatre Workshop, which was, um, it was a council run thing. What age was that? That was, when did I start going there? I started going there when I was about nine yeah, eight or nine. Um, and was that the age they kind of accepted kids, or did they? Have yeah, any? I think eight was like the, the, the youngest. You you had to do like a six week course, so in inverted commas, and and then you were kind of accepted. Everyone was accepted though. You did like this six week course, but it was free. That was the big thing. So and that was all council run. It was council run. I think it was supposed to be tied in with the schools. With so, so I think they got money from education, but. It was kind of a really independent place. Now you, 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 it, it costs you money to go. In fact, I think it is still going now. Um, but it's, but it's, it's not a subsidised thing. It's not subsidised. It's and kids have to pay to go. So I started going. I started going there just as something to do, really. Just as I, I, I quite enjoyed drama. Did someone steer you into that position, or did you think? No, I remember um, a, a friend of um, my dad's. Who, he play, who my dad played football with, his son, who was a little bit, I was about three years older than me, he was in a show. He was in Bugsy Malone that they did. And they did it at the same side theatre in in Ashton. And um, I went to see it. And I remember thinking, oh, wow, this is brilliant. And he was like, yeah, you, you can come along, you know what I mean? You can be in these, these, these shows that they were doing. And it was all, you know, all singing, all dancing. A lot of them, it wasn't kind of... It was tended tend to be musicals that they put on. They did do some kind of straight, probably because of the, the amount of people that they had. They went right. We'll stick them all, in all the on stage. At least everybody get to go on stage and have a bit of an experience. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. It was, and as well because the the, the membership of the uh, the amount of kids that went because it was free was just you know it was they'd have like a thousand kids on stage, um, and it was the only way to get everybody involved. But I remember going watching that show and being really really imp- impressed with it. And thinking it was brilliant. And was that, was that the first time you thought, oh, I think I could get up and do something? Like yeah, that. yeah. I, I mean, I, I think when I when I was when I was younger, I was a bit. Um, maybe I still am. 
I could be a bit overconfident, I think, <laughs> and a bit gobby when I was when I was really like little. Um, so yeah, it was kind of quite natural for me to think, yeah, I could, I could, I'd like to have a go at that. And my sister as well. So me and my sister went together, but it wasn't it. It was just fun. It was never something I didn't want to do it because I was I was obsessed with football. Uh, still at that age, at eight. So when- yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to play for Man United. So all I wanted to do, and as well because as a kid, I, I, my dad played semi pro football. So I followed him. Every, I was with him at weekends every, and he, and he played on a Saturday, and then he he, he played for a, a really good pub team on a Sunday. So I just used to spend my weekends with my dad going round to like you know on different coaches going to watch him play football all over the. All over the northwest, anyway. And when did the football stuff start to fall by the wayside? So, we had a really, really good school football team. And when I was in secondary school, and there was, um, there was, I think there was about probably about eight of the lads on our school football team when we let when we'd finished our GCSEs who signed with clubs. So it all went, you know, went off and playing it, and I didn't, and. I'd not, I'd not got into the, the... I was kind of in the Oldham schools team. And all most of the lads off our school football team all went on to that. So I was kind of going, right, well, I'm not as not as good as them. I was always quite small as well, still am. But um, so so the alarm bells were ringing a little bit. And my, and my dad, because he played at a really good level, had always said, look, it's really hard to make a career out of being a footballer. Even the lads, you know, who'd signed these professional forms... None of them had ended up making it as professional footballers. None of them, you know, managed to earn a living from from doing that. So the kind of the alarm bells were going off a little bit, thinking, right, this is just a dream. This to be to become a footballer, you know, you, there's so many sacrifices as well you've got to make to now. If I want to pursue that when I was sixteen, but also I started playing open age. When I was sixteen, and I broke my leg. Sorry, what's that? No, oh, speak, sorry. I know nothing about football. <laughs> right. and I'm sure so, there's loads of people that don't. What's so, open age? So you play like you know under fourteens, under fifteens, under sixteens, right? And then you start playing against men. Oh, then, right, like, so okay. sixteen, seventeens, when you kind of you know start playing against that, or certainly older lads anyway. Maybe youth teams. So it'd be maybe an under twenty ones team. So you're playing against blokes then, and I started doing that, and actually not the first season, the second season. The first game of the season, I broke my leg playing football. And so I didn't play football for like nearly a full year, which I'd played every single weekend. So that probably seemed like a lifetime yeah, of a yeah. break. And as well, I, I, my head was then turned a little bit because I'd gone to Oldham State Workshop and was kind of put, putting on plays. But that was... It was a brilliant place to go to, don't get me wrong. And loads of actors have all come through there. So like... Anna Friel went there. Um, most of the cast of Coronation Street went there. Do you know? What I mean? So it was a great place for opportunities, a great place to learn. But it was it wasn't really my kind of theatre that they were doing because it was all singing, all dancing. I'm not a great singer. I'm not a great dancer. But I, I did enjoy being on stage. You know what I mean? Performing yeah. a little bit. Um, but, but then what happened when I broke my leg? I was in the sixth form at my school, and there was a teacher there. Uh, called Colin Snell, and he had a theatre. He, well, he was put, he used to put on a lot of plays. Where they formed a theatre group with Matthew Dunster went right. to my school, Paul Hilton, uh, Nicholas Stevenson. So it was a, you know it was a comprehensive. But they had this you know amazing kind of drama group that they they'd set up outside school. So I started doing. I started doing plays with them. So this was an extracurricular, as outside of school yeah, hours, was it? They were putting, yeah, totally independent of the right. school. But just the, the nature of the plays that they put on, they put on, you know, plays that weren't typical school plays. Do you know what I mean? So they were doing kind of stuff like we, we, they did. Well, like, we did Bent, and we did East, and we did, you know, Amadeus. So not not kind of your typical school plays. But when I was in the sixth form, for that year. I just did loads of plays with them. And I already had an agent then, like a kind of a kid's acting agent. And that was my... So I already had a foot in the door and I thought, well, may, maybe I could do this. Maybe this is something that I, I should pursue. Sorry, where, just going back a minute, yeah. where did the, act, the acting agent come about? What age did you get that? And how, so, how did that come about? So that started at Oldham Theatre Workshop. Um, basically, there was... 
thousands of kids that went there. And then there was kind of an agent attached to it. Right, told them dear worship. Right, okay. A bit dodgy, really, I think now, because my parents and everybody else's parents don't know the world of what an agent is and what, rep- you know, they're representing you and they're sending you for auditions and, you know, this, you know, how much you percentage, they get a percentage of your wage. It was just suddenly... Thrust upon you. Thrust upon us, yeah, yeah. But everyone went with it because it was kind of all kids and was like, oh, we might be on the telly. Right, Do you yeah. know what I mean? But what used to happen because of Open Data Workshop and because Granada, which, you know, was still going then at the time, they used to... Uh, basically come to Oldham Theatre Workshop to cast all their kids' dramas that they were doing. So, like, you know, like children's wards, you know. They made so much kids' kids drama there at the time, and, you know, they made, you know, Cracker from there and Prime Suspects. Most of the kids that are in them them programmes all came from Oldham Theatre Workshop because the casting director could go there for a day, maybe two days, and cast an entire programme, uh, you know, with the children. But, they, you know, so there was this agent that was attached attached to that so I kind of was I had this agent thrust upon me really. yeah. but I wasn't complaining at the time but it was a bit now when I look back I go well I would have liked the opportunity to to hang up, tell me what this is all about what it's before. all about yeah. yeah it was all a bit fuzzy about about all that stuff and with the with the workshop yeah um, you say you know you were doing all the big musical and not doing the plays that you wanted to do were yeah. you taught anything about audition technique or no no or anything not. about television not at all you were just kind of the big thing that you were taught that well i the, the big lesson that i learned from going there was the, the kind of the discipline of doing the job of um learning your lines turn it up on being time. on time being committed yeah um all, all that stuff it was brilliant for that the guy who ran it david johnson he's kind of quite you know, famous in, in in the northwest for you know he's still got an acting school now in Manchester and he was brilliant, but he was because he, he had to he'd have like four hundred kids in a room and we were terrified of him, so, you know more than more so than any you know your scariest teacher he he everybody be silent in there, so it was a, in one respect it was amazing but in terms of you know for want of a better word the craft of of acting and technique and stuff like that personally. I didn't learn that much there, really. And, and, and you know, and we're saying that... But I suppose they didn't really have the time or the resources to go into it in depth anyway, because, you know, the amount of people that were there, yeah. no one can get that attention that they need. Yeah, well, exactly. So, so it was kind of just kind of get on with it. And, and what, it, what it did teach me, actually, probably subconsciously, is that watching other people, seeing how they do it, and then just picking things up and going, oh, right, that's a good way of doing it. But that's, that's brilliant because not... you learned that so young and you're still probably doing that I today. Do, I do it. I do. That's all I do. Yeah. That is all I do. So it was, it was amazing in that respect. And, and, and when I was saying about, you know, you know, we were doing musicals, it wasn't then at the time that I was thinking... I don't really, I'm not really getting a lot from this. It's only kind of now that I go, actually, I wanted something else. When we were doing all them kind of shows, I wanted, you know, I, I think I was looking for something else. That's why it wasn't satisfying enough. Did you know what it was at the time where you were going, yeah, I appreciate this and this is fun, but this isn't the area I want to go yeah, it down. Was just that it, was, it was just that it was fun. It wasn't that fulfilling, I'd, I'd say. I had, a good, I had a good time, but it wasn't... There wasn't much passion for Not it. Not really, no. And it, but it was only like late when I did the, the, the plays with, you know, the group outside school um, with, with Colin Snell and with, you know, Matthew Dunster and all that lot. That's when I went, ah, right, this is it. This is, this so, is much better. So the penny dropped then. Yeah, yeah. That's when I started to go, oh, I really, really like this. And actually, I could do this forever. I could do this if I, it, it, you know, or try and do this forever if I want. And did you think about... When did the football come back? Did you well, think about that and worry I, I, that, but if I don't go down the football route, I'll never know? Or do you, or you reside to the fact that... I, I kind of, I figured out that I wouldn't make it as a footballer. Right. I think that was the, the thing as well. Like, you know, there was other lads who were, I, I got to a certain level of playing and then I, I'd play in games where I was going, right, that game's just passed me by now because they're, they're so much better. And, and even these lads haven't made it. So I kind of, I, I, I put it to, to, to bed a little bit. Um... And it was fine. It was all right. I wasn't. I wasn't that 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 bothered, you know. And as well, starting going out a bit more, you know, like we makes the the commitment kind of to, to it, which you've got to have, kind of waned. So, 
Yeah. And then girls come into play and then... A bit of that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so after that, you started doing these plays outside of school. So what age are we now? Are we 15, 16? Yeah, 16, 17. 16, 17. sixth form. Right. Remember, so, so I kind of, you know, had a car as well and was a bit more independent. <clears throat> and we did, we did, a, we did a, uh, a production of East. That's what we did. And we, we, we did like a mini tour around like, so we did it at Berry College. We did it over at Bretton Hall. We did it at... Um, I done Abraham Moss Centre. Um, and whose idea was it to do that? Well, it was at the, 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 our, my old teacher, who was now my friend Colin Snell. He was at, he, that's what he did. He took things all over. There. He, he used to take, well every year now. He still takes plays up to up to Edinburgh. How brilliant that you had someone with yeah. that much passion and insight to go right. Come on, because there wasn't a load of you, was there? How many was there? No, you? well, th- then I think Matthew and Paul Hilton, they were all. I'd gone to drama school or maybe even left because they're about six or seven years older than me. They might have all left drama school then and were trying to, you know, you know, forge a career. Um, so the, these were other people that had just come into the group. But there'd probably be... When we did East, there was only four or five of us, I think, doing this kind of mini tour, as it were. And we weren't doing... Yeah, I think we were doing every night. And I just remember it... But I remember that in particular, it being brilliant because just going to these different places and putting on these plays. And I was thought they were good as well. It was being part of something that I, I I was kind of quite proud of and I think, and that it was quite, people were, oh, well, maybe they weren't, but it felt like people were, were impressed by what we were doing and were enjoying it and I, and, and, and that felt great and we'd kind of go for a, the different place. I remember going for a drink most nights with the people who'd come to see the play and talking about it and I remember thinking, oh, this is, this is, this is good. And, you know, that was, was at the right age, I suppose. The kind to of, appreciate it more. Yeah, yeah. Now, just jumping back in yeah. time, because we know he touched on the Asian being thrust upon and all that. Yeah. And you did mention a show that I know you were in, because you were in Children's World, weren't you? Yeah, I was in Children's World. How yeah. did you find that, be, being on a, a TV set so young and having no real idea of how that machine type of works? Well, it... Now it feels like I've always known how that works. And I think even even then, it was just... It felt a bit like a youth club doing that job. It just felt right. like a bit of fun because it was all kids on it. We had... I think it, we filmed it for probably two or three months in Granada, in a studio. So it was all kids. We'd have a, we'd have a tutor there and the tutor would... So we'd have to do so you know so many hours of school in every day. It's probably about an hour and a half we'd have to do every day was the kind of legal obligation. Um, but in terms of how it how it actually worked, I don't really remember feeling confused by any of it or overawed by any of it because I think the first job I did I did Sherlock Holmes with Jeremy Brett where I did one, um, I did like two scenes with him, and that was when I was probably about ten. And we went. Me and my mum went down to Great Yarmouth to do it. And because I, 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 I was so young, I just wasn't. I just picked it up. I wasn't overawed by it. I wasn't no. intimidated by it in any way. I just kind of got on with it and did it. And then, so by the time I was doing Children's World, I was kind of a little bit au fait with it because I'd done. I did a, a, a TV series called Making Out as well. I think I did that before Children's Ward. Um, and so I think I probably learn on there, but it was never it. It just felt very natural. I think when you're that young, you just kind of get on with it. You know, yeah. you, you're not kind of analysing it. You know, these people are putting down marks for you where you got to stand, or you know, you got the director coming up to you telling you how to do something different. You just kind of go, oh, okay. You just listen to what everyone's saying. And did you feel at that age that you were? picking up on stuff and learning stuff or as you say it was kind of like fun because it was a youth club yeah, atmosphere yeah I, I, yeah I didn't think I, like I was learning anything I must admit I just felt like just certainly the, I mean the technical side of it when I'm saying that not so much the acting side of it but the, the, the technical side of just being on a, on a set I was just like right well this is what this world is and just, you know when you're that young I think you just it, it just kind of you just absorb it and probably because you're so process. open so, you know most kids are just so open and they just want to play and yeah. just be yeah. in that moment I remember getting told off quite a lot uh, 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 on Children's World because we were messing about I remember that I remember one time we we, we got re- we, they got us all into a room and really told us off I, can, I remember that because I think that it, that it it was just a bit of a laugh, you know. I, remember, I do remember watching it. Do you? When yeah, I was yeah. a kid and going, God, 
and that hospital looks like a laugh. Yeah. I think yeah. I want to try and get my leg broken. I'd love to go in there. <laughs> but I remember, I do remember thinking at the time, because I was like mad passionate about acting even when I was young, so I was right. always wanting to learn off off these lot. Yeah. And I remember thinking that everybody was v- a very natural level. Yeah. I, I, but then when when one person was was acting in a different style, it did used to ping out. Ping out, you know yeah, I mean? you'd see it, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I, even when I... I'm just thinking back now, even when I was doing that job, it, I had no idea that it was going to be a career, that that's what I was going to do, because I still then, even then, I wanted to play football. Yeah. You know, it wasn't... So I had no a, a ambition to kind of pursue this, so it was even more fun. It wasn't even like I had to go, right, I've got to, you know, learn and behave here now. It was just like, have fun. And that's, I think that's, that's probably the, the best way. I think it was good that it was like that. Well, that's probably a good bit of advice to give to a kid who's going into acting is just... Just have fun, Just have yeah. some fun. Yeah, I mean, I, sometimes you get, like, people coming up. I'm sure you have it, like, parents of kids going, oh, I want what, you know, my son wants to, to get into a- acting, you know. And if they're really young, I just say, you know, well... Join either a, a local and drama group or a local theatre group or one of these, you know, um, you know. I know there's a lot of kind of stage schools now, but the main thing is just enjoy it. Don't put yourself under any pressure about wanting to be on the TV because it's such a big thing when you're young. I think it's, I'm sure it's the same now, but I, I know when I was young, being on the telly was massive. It was like wow. Yeah. I remember the first time I, you know, when I did, was doing Sherlock Holmes, I was like, wow, this is amazing. I remember thinking it's really exciting. Well, in a way, it's kind of otherworldly, isn't it? Cause yeah. It, you, you're as a family, you're as a unit, you sit down, you have your tea, and you, everybody puts the telly on, and that's the other world. You yeah. know, something like Coronation Street, Weatherfield is another world. Yeah. And, and then, then if th- you know somebody in it. Somebody in it. I remember being at Granada when I was a kid, and I thought, do you remember Elton Wellsby? Who was the. Was he, he sports? He was the sports yeah, presenter. Yeah, yeah. I remember waiting for an audition to go in. He might have even been for Children's Ward at, at, at Granada, waiting to go in. And. Uh, Elton Wells be coming out and me and me being with my mum going, wow, just proper blown away. He really, is real. really excited. Yeah, yeah. And Tony Wilson coming out and my mum going, oh, look at him. And he had a pair of white trainers on with his suit. My mum went, what's he got on? <laughs> <laughs> Fancy coming to work dressed like that. <laughs> Trendsetter. <laughs> yeah. So jumping ahead now, so you've gone, you've done this little mini tour with, with Colin Snell and yeah. you've gone to Bretton Hall and all that. And what age were you, say, 17 I was 17, yeah. And then... So were you doing your A-levels? I was doing my A-levels, yeah, at the same time. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's all, that's all that was going on. Because I hadn't picked drama as well. You know what I mean? So I'd, what were you doing in your A-levels? I was doing sociology, Spanish and English lit. And, and Colin Snell, who was... Because he, he was my English lit teacher. And, but he also used to, he used to teach drama. And he was like, why aren't you doing... Why have you not picked drama? And I was so stubborn... At that time, that's when I was 15, 16. So stubborn because I want to be a footballer. There's no point in me doing, doing drama. There's no point. Now I think I'd have had a great time if I'd have took people's advice. And I think even my mum and dad were going, well, there's no harm in doing it. You can, you know, you, you're good at it. You, I, you know, well, that's debatable. But, you know, you can do it. So why not, why not take that as one of your options? Why not do it as an A-level? And I was just like... No, because I'm not going to be. I don't want to do that. I want to be a footballer. <laughs> still, still at that age, you still. were still going. No, it's yeah. still fun. Still, yeah. Mm. So, how did the air levels turn out? <laughs> um, I was lazy. I did really well in my GCSEs, like, I, and then when I did my A levels, I was just so. Now, when I look back, I was so kind of cocky and just thought I knew it all. You know, I think, I think a lot of people do. I at think, that yeah, age. I think most people are like that. And I didn't put the work in. Um, just yeah, lazy. So I got, I got, a, I, I did a sociology. I did well because I, I, I could do it. I got an A for sociology, but for uh, Spanish and English lit, I got a D. And I remember, but for both of them, and I remember being, I remember getting the results and being absolutely gutted. I was like, oh, and I knew why it was. I knew when I was going to pick them up. I thought this could go, you know, really either really bad or quite bad, and it was, you know, quite bad. But I, I remember, as soon as I saw him, I just thought, it's my own fault, straight away. It wasn't like, how's that happened? I, I knew, I, was, I just didn't put the work in. Didn't so put the work so in. what next then? When did, it, when did it go, do you know what? I think I really need to seek out some training. So, so, so it was my drama teacher with Colin was saying, yeah. you know, I think it'd benefit you if you went to drama school, um, but you don't have to go right away. It's totally up to you. 
but he was the one who put that idea in my head about going to drama school. But he was saying, he said to me, have a year out after you finish your A-levels and we can carry on, we can carry on doing plays or, you know, you can go and do, you know, you do whatever you go traveling, go and do whatever you want because he'd have like Matthew Dunster, Paul Lilton, you know, Nicholas Stevens and all these people that had all gone off to drama school. They hadn't gone straight away. I think Matthew ended up working, he did working at the water board, Northwest Water. And, you know, they couldn't get in at first. So he was, so you know, drama teacher was quite keen on me just saying, you know, you don't put yourself under pressure like you have to get into drama school. Um, especially at 18, it's a very funny age, especially for a, for a lad. Yeah, it's all tricky. I mean... I, I, it, You're still trying to work out who you are. Yeah. So how, yeah. Can you, how can you say, well, this is what I really want to somebody who doesn't know you when you don't know who you are? Yeah, and, and I was, well, I was, I was like... I didn't know, it, I still wasn't kind of fully committed to going, right, yeah, let's do this as a career. I'll do this as a job. I want to be an actor. Still, even at 18? Even at 18, I was still like that. So what I did was, when I, when I finished, I, I'd applied, I think I did deferred entry. So you like, you know, so for the year after for, for, for university, I'd applied to, uh, I think, uh, for a sociology course at Nottingham where I got accepted. And I think I got accepted at Manchester. And I was thinking, and then I was thinking about journalism because I enjoyed writing. Um, I was thinking, and I was thinking, then I was even thinking sports journalism. I'd written a bit for, I'd written on the school newspaper doing sports stuff. God, so the, the, the sports was still, candle yeah, was still burning was still there. bright, wasn't it? Yeah. And then what happened was, um, I got a job. Um, so I still had this agent in Manchester. It was kind of a kid's agent. And I thought, right, well, if I want, if I do want to do this, then I've got to get a, 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 an agent in London who looks after adults or an agent in Manchester who looks after adults, but I can't stay with that agent anymore. Um, and I got, I did a job, this thing called the Bare Necessities that was like an ITV one-off drama. And what it was, was it was the Full Monty before the Full Monty had even been thought of. Oh, really? So it was about a load of, this was about minors, so that you know all the pit, you know the, their pit had closed, and it, they they formed this, you know, it was the same as for money. Formed this group of strippers, uh, and I was like, I was seventeen, eighteen, so I was like the son of one of the the, the miners who was stripping, and I ended up stripping in it, my character. Um, but what happened was um, when they had the screening of that it was down in London, um, and. I said to the casting director, who's just passed away actually, Doreen Jones, who's brilliant. Uh, I said to her, I said to her, look, I'm, I am thinking, of, you know, maybe doing this as a, a you know, going into to, to be an actor. I'm still kind of in two minds. And she said at the screening, she said, well, Lou Coulson, who is uh, was Sandra Vole's agent, who was also in it. She said she's she thought you were very good. You should go and have a meeting with her. Um, so I did. So I went and had a meeting with with Lou Coulson. And I said to her, I, I said, I've applied to do uh, journalism, uh, uh, no, sorry, sociology at university, so I might even still go and do that. But it was in a year's time, so I said, I've got like 12 months. And I said, but I, I also might apply for drama schools um, for, the, for the year after. Yeah. Um, but I want to see how this 12 months goes. And she went, Totally fine, whatever you want to do, because she knew I was young and I was just didn't know my own mind. She said, whatever you want to do, she said, we'll represent you for however long you want, for 12 months or whatever, if you want to go off to drama school, we can even carry on representing you then, it's totally up to you. So she was absolutely brilliant. Um, do you think, in a way, for that year out that you took, before whichever path you were going to go down, yeah. you went into doing some auditions and things like that, maybe to rule it out, that acting wasn't for you, or... Because... Yeah, may, yeah, maybe. I don't, I don't know. I was just I, again. It was still. It was fun as well. There wasn't any pressure. There was no pressure. And you still about, found it fun. I still found it fun. Yeah, there was no when I was going because they they then started putting me up for auditions and I was like I was just going into them thinking there's no I don't have to get these jobs. No pressure. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it don't matter. I can if I don't get it, it's kind. Of, it is. It yeah. I think it is it. it, it then it is proof that it's not meant to be this, and I can go off to university and and do whatever I want to do. Um, but I applied to a couple... I, I did audition them in that year for a couple of drama schools. And I, um, but again, I was a bit lazy. I remember being, like, not... Um, 
Oh, no, not lazy. I was a bit stubborn again because I was like, well, I'm not going to London. <laughs> I'm a northerner. I'm a northerner. Yeah. I'm not going to London to go to drama school. So I applied at, <clears throat> for Hull, which, w- which was more of an academic course. Right. Uh, I applied for Manchester Met. Um, that, that was just a drama course. And um, where else? Bretton Hall. So I only, I, I think I got accepted at Hull because it was an academic course. I don't think you had to audition there. And I auditioned for Man Met and I auditioned for uh, Bretton Hall. And I think Bretton Hall asked me to go for a recall. No, they offered me a place, Bretton Hall. And I didn't go. And I just said no. But, uh, and Man Met, I didn't even get a recall for. But at that, in that year out, so while I was going for them auditions, I was getting work. And I just, I thought, you know what, I can, I, I can, di- I can, I don't need to, I, well, not I don't need to go. But I might have another year out. And see how that goes. <laughs> yeah, if yeah. this one's been successful. This one's been all right. I was, yeah. I was getting jobs. But one of the reasons why I was getting jobs, I think, because there wasn't much competition out there in terms of volume of competition. Because everyone was going to drama school. So there was, you know, there was people... It, for that age group. For that age group, there wasn't that many young actors. There was, you know, there was young actors out there. But there wasn't as many as there was when I was, say, 25, when everyone's come out of drama school and we're all kind of, you know fighting for elbow room a bit more um so and it was still fun oh yeah it was yeah yeah even though it it was still fun obviously you took it seriously and i'm not i'm not trying to say that but it was fun but were you learning stuff did you feel well if i'm going to take this year out and i'm deciding and then you're thinking oh this is going well maybe i'll take another year out did you feel as you said this is a bit like training were you learning I as re- you were going on i really consciously started watching people i think when i did right so there was a turning there point. was yeah that, that that was kind of probably when i did that bare necessities that's when i suddenly went right but because because i'm i i became aware of people of, of like the direct saying oh that was a good take not to me to other actors saying oh that was a good take or oh, that was Oh, that was right. No, no, don't. That's not quite right. Let's go again. It's not something. And I was then. I was so then. I was going right. So there's there's. Whereas before it was like everything you do is good, because you you're acting. It's good. It's all good. But but then the, you know that that it was definite mark change in going. All right. So some things, some things work better than others. There might not be any. There's different choices. There might not be wrong choices. But some things you know work better so you consciously pushed your antennae up to oh, yeah and I remember then I did a, 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 oh, the first time when I did a job in London when I was 18 and I went there it was a TV job and I had to get accommodate I, I lived in a, a, a house with a, this this girl that we found in a in, in the BBC newspaper Ariel we got that and me and my mum looked for adverts of places to stay and I stayed there for like three months in White City and I remember doing that it was a thing called Beck it was um one series, one series of it with Amanda Redman, and I remember, really remember watching everyone on that, especially watching her because she was so professional and so, so on it, um, and and other actors who, who who came in and watching that. But a big thing that I did, I remember because I was I was in London for three months, and this put me off London actually for a long time. Um, I was in London for three months. I was eighteen. Um, it was kind of winter. Didn't know anybody. All the other actors who were in it were older than me. Probably only probably about seven or eight years, but they, they felt like adults. Where I still felt like a kid. And I did, I, there was no one. There was no mobile phone, so I wasn't really in touch with the. You know, there was nobody like you could text and go. Do you fancy meeting? And I didn't really know anybody. There was only the actor uh, Kieran O'Brien, and I only vaguely knew him. I knew he lived in London, but I never met up with him. Um, but so what I did was I went to see. Because I lived up the road from uh, the Bush Theatre. I went to see every play that was on in them three months at the Bush Theatre. I went to see loads of plays in 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 the West End. Loads of stuff. Um, when you could afford to. I could, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It wasn't that expensive. I remember seeing Train Spotting because uh, Train Spotting the film was coming out, but it was on at the what was the old Trafal? It was um, the Whitehall Theatre. That's now right. Yeah. Studios. I was seeing that. Um, but David Eldridge's play. Oh, what was it called? Uh, I can't remember, you know, stuff, really good stuff. And, and, and what I'm going to the bush and seeing John Simmons stuff and, and Eddie Marsan and um, Neil Stook and seeing them as older actors and going, wow, these are brilliant 
this is brilliant, really, really good. And that little, and I remember that being weird, going to the bush and going, what, this is a theatre. It's like, it's as big as, you know, the living room, isn't it? Yeah. And go, but then being up so close to them. And because, I think because I didn't have anybody else to go out with or nothing else to do, I think if I would have done, I'd have probably gone out getting drunk every night with people. But I didn't, I just went to see loads of us, nearly every film that was on. So you started to feed your passion more and more. More. I, I, I absolutely was, and I bought loads of... But I remember... I, and the theatre thing was it was a conscious decision because I thought, I'm probably not going to go to drama school now. But still, I'm probably not going to go, I'm but prob- just to rule it out. <laughs> yeah, just in case, yeah. Still kind of holding on to it. But I did, but I, I did think everyone's... L- 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 I, I, yeah, I definitely made... I, I definitely knew that. I was aware enough to know that I'm at an advantage in that everyone's going to drama school having a theatre training, <coughs> but they're not... They come out and they don't know anything about doing television, really. But were you? did you consciously make a thought to go, I'm going to start my tr- theatre training here yeah, before just, I go, by it, going to see the current people at work? No, it was... Well, it was, it was more about, I'm probably not going to go. I don't know. I'm probably not going to go to drama school now. So I'm going to get as much you know take out uh, uh, take take in as much just by watching and reading I remember buying I bought all the uh, Stanislavski books and all that I remember buying that and um, did you read them? yeah didn't couldn't really make head and a tail of them to be honest with you because I think just uh, uh, sh- sh- trying to read them at that age anyway it felt really dense and I thought yeah, I, I, this is why people go to drama school because yeah. just by doing it it, fr- it it takes out it takes out all that kind of you know out how heavy it can read. Um, but that was definitely a decision because I thought, I'm at an advantage to all these kids who are, are at drama school now. You know, you're going to come out and, you know, I know it might sound a bit clinical, but they're going to be competition in four years' time because they're all going to be up for the same jobs. Oh, yeah. So now it's time. I, so then I did think... So I must have been thinking and I thought, right, this is kind of a foot in the door. But I read low. I remember reading. I just read loads and... And watch loads. It was before the internet as well, you know. So you just kind of now. I'd probably just. I mean, I'm not on Facebook, but I probably I, I probably would be if I was a kid now. Do you know what I mean? I, you just sit in your room on Facebook all night, wouldn't you? Yeah. Whereas I, I went out to. Um, I think you how incredible at that age that you could afford to oh, go and sit because everything was probably like ten pound or I maybe even you could. I have, think it was cheap. I think it was about seven, six quid at the bush. I mean, it's just and he give you like a little. I think it was like a, the ticket was like almost. Like, I think it was like a little raffle ticket or like a little white receipt and written or something like that. Yeah, yeah. It was all. I remember it being. being cheap. I mean, I I did have a bit of not loads of money in my pocket, but I was getting I was getting paid for the, for the for the TV job I was doing, and I had no outgoings because I lived at home with my mum and dad. Actually, no, no. Of course, I had outgoings. I was paying the rent at this this house in London. Yeah, but yeah. I think they'd give me subsistence on the job. In the days when they gave you subsistence, um, so I did. I, you know, so I could afford to, to 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 go out and do things, but it was cheap. It wasn't like it was nothing like what it is now. So we're getting towards the end of that. Your year out, you're still deciding. Yeah, what's going to happen? What what happened at the end of that year? I think I, I think I'd almost. I don't really remember to be honest. But I think I forgot about it. Then it was like right. This is what I'm doing now. This you is, just carried on. I just carried on doing it. Yeah. Then I was like, right. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna work now. This is this is this is what it is, and I, I didn't. I, now, now I think God, I'm so naive in a way because it's such a big decision, you know, be like as a as a commitment to to being an actor and to going right. This all my eggs are in this basket now. I'm not gonna go off into university and or or get a trade or do any of that stuff. I'm gonna gonna do this now. So you, ne- you did you consciously go? I'm not gonna have a plan B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or did you think, that, that, or was it, well, I've, I've gone down this path so far now, I don't really feel like reversing and trying to find something else. Yeah, I think so. And I was doing all right. I was working, I was getting jobs, and I thought, well, you know, naively I thought, well, this must be how it works. You was don't... it still fun at this point? Yeah. 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 It's such did, a crucial thing. It didn't stop, it, I mean, it didn't, stop, it didn't stop being fun for me. And it doesn't, you know, it's not, most of the time it's fun and it's good and I, and I love it until you're out of work. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it? It's them periods where you're like, you know, I think, that, so I think there was, I, I had a period where I did it, I think I did nearly a year where I didn't get any work and I worked for mates. Because I was and still what, up in, living at home as well. Oh, you'd gone, you'd gone back home. <laughs> yeah, I never, I never moved to London. So after that year, 
Yeah. Then you went back. Well, well, I, w- I was never in oh, London. Oh, yeah, no, three was, months. I, I was there for three months. Yeah. And I'm trying to think what other jobs I did after that. I, I, I can't really remember. Did I do all the King's Men after that? 19. But I know you I did. Really... I know you went into what was a very popular show at the time, which was Where the Heart Is. Oh, I did Where the Heart Which was, for people uh, who don't know what it was, it was a, a big, I'm, if, for, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. but it was a Sunday night, yeah. big drama set in the lakes, was it? No, it was set up the road from oh, here. Oh, set up the road from where we are now. Literally, yeah, it's set, set about five, no, about ten miles away, up the road in Slowit. It's called right. Marsden. Marsden. Right. Yeah. And it was brought, it was a big show, wasn't it? The drawing was big audience. Yeah, it was massive. Yeah, I mean, I think it was like second in the ratings behind EastEnders for 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 like it was it was huge. Right, it's of its yeah. time. You're talking maybe ten million viewers, something like that. Well, it was, I think it was more than it was like sixteen, seventeen million. Wow, viewers. that's crazy. Yeah. I'm sure it, well, it was. It was definitely up there. It was a big series. And you only did two series. I did, that, I didn't I did you? two series. I, what, what happened was I, that was it. After that, Beck, I'd always lived at home. I lived. I still live with my mum and dad. So I did a series called Born to Run that they did in Manchester. Um, kind of coming in and out of it, but earning money. And then I got off... I remember I was doing Born to Run and I literally finished it and went and audition for Where the Heart Is and, and, and got that job. And it all... Yeah, I don't... So I don't remember it feeling difficult when now the reality is I know that it's, a di- it's difficult. It's not an easy job, you know, to go into. Um, so when... So Where the Heart Is, they filmed... I was still living at home. We did two series of it. So I had no, you know, financial commitments or anything like that. So I thought, this is, you know, this is quite easy. This is, a, so that, I think that was going back to your question, about your other question about, you know, uh, you know, did you feel, you know, kind of daunted by, you know, doing it? And because I was working, yeah, no. Not but so. you stopped doing that very popular show because it wasn't the type of show that you wanted to do, was well, it? Or certainly what you wanted to put all your energies into. What it, what it was, it was... Uh, I was... My agent was brilliant, Lou Coulson. She said, so when I when I got the job, they said they want to option you for a second series, but we don't want them to option you. And then... And she said, because we, you should be free to go and do other things. She was very much of that thinking, being, you know, being available. They can't do that. Now it's kind of common. That so for those who don't know what oh, yeah. optioning is... It's basically that the company that hires you yeah. will say, uh, we want you to do uh, three series. Yeah. Now, we can terminate your contract at any point, yeah. but you can't get out of it. So you're yeah. basically, you're locked in unless you're locked the channel, in. channel doesn't want it or something yeah. else happens. Yeah. That's correct. And it? they lock in what your what pay will be as well. They give you like a, I think it's like, what is it? For, for however many years. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so they didn't. You, your agent didn't want to. Didn't want me get to locked in with the, that option. Yeah, and I did. I I had to get locked in with it. So, at the back of my mind, <sighs> I was thinking, right, this isn't. I, I don't want to be locked into anything here, really. So, at the back of my, she kind of planted that seed that you know you should be available for the work. She had confidence in me that I could go and get work at, at elsewhere. Um, but I remember then when I did the second series, in my head, I was thinking. I'm not doing. I, I don't want to do a third one because I want to do something else. I'm doing. I, I, I'm being an actor because I love it, and I want to do a variety of different things. Uh, and I was young, you know. I, like you know, I was, then I was. I was nineteen. Right. I was thinking, I, 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 and I can do other things because I've been working. It's been great. You know what I mean? Um, and so, I, I, you know, I don't want it. I don't want to do it. Had it been now. It might be, you know, a different story because I've got a mortgage and stuff like that. I've got kids and, and stuff. So the financial implications come in. But at that age, it, it was the right, it was absolutely the right thing to, to go and do because you, you, you've got no, you know, you've got kind of no, no responsibilities whatsoever. I just wanted to do a variety of work. Didn't want a kid. I'd done it for two, two, two series. So three months each, probably three, four months each. And it was great. I had a brilliant, brilliant time on it. And, but I just, I, I, but I'd done it. Yeah. That's how I felt. I'd done it, you know. I suppose, and over that time of you not knowing if this was the right path for you, suddenly it all becomes, no, this is the right thing I want to do. Yeah. So you had a lot of ambition and a lot of passion and you yeah. wanted to try lots of different things and not get, you know, anchored down to one particular to that. type of part. And it, and it is well, because it can be quite dangerous because then I was, I was aware of that, of going, you could end up start relying on this money now. If I could buy a big car and, you know what I mean, and then I've, you know 
got, got to pay for the insurance on that every year and or maybe you know with the money maybe you know move out of mum and dad's house and go and do all that and then I've got financial obligations so don't do it it's, it's you know kind of stay free yes yeah. and, and 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 it was definitely the right, the right thing to do I don't think I got a job off the back of it coming off the back of it but then I don't think I worked for a long time afterwards and I remember my mum and dad got kind of going you know maybe you should have stayed in that maybe you know for a bit of financial stability but I, but I, I can re- remember myself just thinking that doesn't matter about I'm not bothered about that well I don't think you, anybody goes into this industry the, for financial for stability. financial stability no did you ever think at any point oh maybe I should go back and go to drama school or anything like that not by that point then because I, I kind of wore it as a badge of honour a little bit as well. You know, I still do, I must admit. Because I know some people who haven't gone to drama school who are, you know, who are actors. I know loads. Who, who, yeah. who, who go, but but some of them who go, um, oh, I always feel like I should have gone and still oh, right, like, feel a nagging sense, do you know, that they should have gone and feel a little bit, can feel a little bit intimidated by other people that have, that they haven't don't have that theatre training. But I, I used to... Because it marks it marks you out as a little bit different if you've if you've not been or if you know you've not been able to go or whatever it just gives you you know a bit of right if everyone's been trained a certain way. But there's there's going to be loads of people you know probably some people listen to this that that maybe want to go but aren't able to. Aren't go. able to. But go. how lucky were you that you got that break at the Oldham Workshop and started your training from the, when you were from young. When I was a kid, so I didn't even think about it. There's so much now that when I, I know when I'm on a set and, I, and I'll, I, you know, you, you, you do some, or somebody will ask you a question and you go, God, yeah, I, I just, I, I, I automatically know the answer to that. I don't know how I know the, the answer to it, but just do. Maybe because you technical, were there. Just technical things like, you know, I don't know, just, just, yeah. But you were there having fun. And as you say, you know, all these children, children are sponges. Yeah. It just, just kind of goes all. in. Yeah. Soak everything up. I mean, so do you think, in, you know, in this day and age, when it is, training is so expensive and in a way it's becoming a bit elitist because, you know, those days of the grants, they're, yeah, so that's game over. Do you think it is essential now for, for, to, to go to drama school and, and find your training? No, uh, no, no. I mean, I, I I think there is. I think it, it can be a brilliant thing. I think for, 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 for as a foot in the door, as a way in for kids, if you can afford it, then it's great. But I think there's so much emphasis placed on it being the only way, and it's really not the only way. Yeah. And now you watch, you know, a lot of telly and a lot of the best young actors. You watch them; they've not been, they haven't been to drama school. They might have done some kind of training where they've been part of drama groups or they've been, you know, part of like kind of old and theatre workshop type places. Brilliant act. Vicky McClaw didn't go, as far as I know. No, well, uh, we had a brilliant chat with Vicky on the first episode of the podcast. Yeah. And she went down a very different route. Yeah, didn't do it. You know, Jack O'Connell, I don't think, has gone. He was amazing. Um, I think uh, Stephen Graham didn't... Well, I think he got kicked out, but he didn't go. He didn't do the full course, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, loads of, you know, fantastic actors. You watch, you go... You know, we were talking about that program, the three girls that was on last night, and the three young girls that were in it. I don't, they, they, I think they're too young to have gone, but they can do it. Yeah. They can, they, so believable, so truthful. You can't kind of teach that. Do you know what I mean? I don't think yeah. you can, t- that rawness and that that honesty that's in their performances, you can't, you can't teach it. I think what it, for, for me, what it can do is drama school. It, it, it can take that and it can give you other te- techniques that might be able to help you out of if, if you're stuck. And you can be taught other things and, and you can grow and you go, how about, how about this? You might not use it now, but you might use it in a few years. Yeah, time, yeah. So I'd, but, but for me, I, I mean, it's, it's tricky, isn't it? Because Oldham Theatre Workshop, when I went there, it was free. If it hadn't been free, I don't know if you my mum and dad would have, would, have, would, have, would have been able to afford to, to send me. And my sister as well, you know what I mean? Because we would both wanted to go. Uh, or maybe they would have found, you know, ways of ways of paying for it. And I think now everything has got a cost when it comes to young kids with drama because you can make money out of it. People yeah. make money out of it. I'm not saying that in a cynical way, that, you know, they've got, a, they've got things to run, but nothing's funded in that way any, anymore. There's a lot of actors from Oldham 
or people acting who went to Oldham Theatre Workshop. That's not because Oldham's a hotbed of acting talent. Let's say we're Nottingham, you know, all them, you know, Samantha Morton and all the kids who are in, you know, This Is England. It's not because Nottingham's, but it's just because they've had opportunity. Because they've got an free. outlet. Yeah it's, yeah. There, yeah, it's there where they can, you know, it's, it's a brilliant place where they can, where they can go and... I mean, it's Nottingham free. I was, they're Nottingham th- th- that's I a don't know if workshop. it still is now, but, uh, you know, they had to jump through the hoops. They had to audition to get in. And right. it wasn't just like audition, everybody gets in blanket. Right. They were strict. Right. And every year, and if you didn't turn up, she would yeah. just say, you're out on you're your gone. ear. Yeah. You know, so it was like proper training. You're on time. You're, yeah. you're being professional from the off. See, that's invaluable, that being kind of, that, like, just, just well, it's, the basics. It's funny, nearly everyone that I've spoke to at the, mo- at the, uh, at the moment, they've, they've all, all said one thing, you know, being on time. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, it's being up for it, being polite, being a good sport, being a good team member. Yeah. You know those things are across the board. Yeah, it's Very a huge important. part of it on on in theatre and on set. You know, it's yeah, like, it's like probably sixty percent of it. But um, but whether it, I, I don't think it's the be and be end and be all and end all going to drama school. I think I, I, I suppose you've just got to find. What's available to you in mm. your area? Yeah, and if there isn't anything, yeah, make something. Yeah, you can do it yourself. Yeah, yeah. make something yeah. yourself. Get together with other people. Yeah, because every place has got a community, mm. and even if you have to look under the rocks and stones, they'll be there, and there'll be there might even be two or three more people that have got a little bit of passion like you. I mean, look at you, Will. It took you ages to figure it out. To yeah. figure it out. Yeah. Mm. I know some people that have wanted to do something like this from the word dot, you know. Yeah, yeah. Some people aren't like that. It no. takes time to figure out what route you're going to go down. Yeah. And you do need a support network. Mm. Luckily, I know your your parents were very supportive of yeah. you, weren't they? they were, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, really, really good. But it, it, just the... Because the, 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 this thing now, they're like, you know, you, with these working class uh, you know, kids... It's so expensive to go. That's the London thing as well. It's so London centric to go and up sticks and to find accommodation in London yeah. and then to pay for all your courses and stuff like that. You leave with like what 30, 40 grand's worth of debt before you've even kicked off. Well, I remember, and you know, it's 20 years since I graduated this year, but I remember a fair amount of people on graduation having been there for three years. Right, pack the bags and move back. back. Now, whether that be up north, whether that be Scotland, Sweden, America, yeah, they're going back. So, in a way, what they've just been doing for three years is a bit redundant. Yeah, yeah. You've got. I think if you if you if you're going into it, then that that commitment has got to be there for you've got to, you've got to stay in the lines. Then that's where it's all going on. Yeah, you know, it is it's moving out a little bit, but not when you're first starting out. It's all all your meetings are down there and kind of you know. All the you know the theatre the amount of theatre you there's a, there's a lot of theatre in Manchester good theatre but there's only three or four theatres <laughs> London how many is there you know there's stuff stuff to go and see great stuff I'm you know really gutted a lot of the time like you can't yeah you know I read reviews and stuff things that I want to go and see plays that I want to go and see and just can't. I think the one thing that I've really enjoyed talking to you about is that when you had, you were down in London for that three months because you were working. And I know, I know that nowadays it's not as easy to go, get to the theatre, try and watch theatre and watch brilliant actors mm. that you respect and that you admire, that you can try and learn from. Yeah. But I suppose if, if you can afford to do that, yeah. get to wherever. And also the great thing is now there's lots of touring plays that yeah, go around. Yeah, yeah. So they go out to the, the regional theatres, mm. which are, of course, a lot, lot cheaper yeah. than, you know, go, who can afford going into the West End? Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. But that's that's a lovely bit of advice. It was, a, it was, yeah, it was, it was invaluable, really. But like, you know, and as well, seeing people that were just a li- only about two or three years older than me being brilliant and kind of, Going, wow, that's some performance that you know, and seeing that. So you know, like John Simon, what's the guy who's in? Um, he's in EastEnders now. He's got red hair. Uh, Jake, something or other. Jake Wood. He was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I can't remember what the play was called, but it was him and Eddie Marsan, and they were brilliant. Amazing. Yeah. Mm. Well, 
It's been brilliant talking to you. Oh, Thanks cheers, so much, man. Thank you. What do you think of that, William Ash? He is a cracker. What a good... I mean, I love being up north, uh, and it's brilliant to meet genuine professional northerner, William Ash. Um, did you enjoy it? Wasn't he lovely? Great bloke. Um, this is all panning out very well, these podcasts. Do you think so? He's nodding his head. Producer Griff, he's nodding his head. I want to thank Producer Griff, because as much as you hear me on the mic, the stuff that goes on behind the scenes, uh, all the technical stuff, I don't know, bugger all about that. That's the man. So this is a two-shot pod, but it's a, a two-man pod, if you like. But also, I want to thank you. I really do. Thanks for subscribing. What? What do you mean you don't subscribe? Hit hit, hit subscribe now, right? Do it. While you're there, give us five stars. Write a nice review. Spread the word. Spread the love out there. The Two Shot Pod. At Two Shot Pod, you say. Yeah, follow us on Twitter. At Two Shot Pod. Follow us on Instagram. The Two Shot Podcast. Search for it on Facebook. Right? And also, how's about this? We're all on email now. TwoShotPod at gmail.com. Drop us a line. Tell us now what you think. Maybe you think, oh, Craig, I would love you to have a chat with so-and-so. I might be able to get them on. Yeah? Do it. Or, yeah, actually, don't say anything nasty. Just send nice things. Spread the love. I also want to spread the love to the splicing block. What is it? You don't know? Go on to it. Google splicingblock.com. Show them some love too. I've been Craig Parkinson. This has been the Two Shot Podcast. I will see you next week, yeah? Remember, subscribe. Over and out. Ta-ta. The Two Shot Podcast is presented by me, Craig Parkinson, recorded and produced by Thomas Griffin for Splicing Block. Our music, our brilliant music, is courtesy of Then Thickens. Cheers. Cheers.